For three years, we've been following the aftermath of the Westerhouse tragedy in Platt. In September of 2015, Scott Westerhouse killed his family, set his house on fire, and then killed himself. Kelland Investigates revealed he was operating several organizations that took grant money and held multiple conflicting roles. Authorities determined Westerhouse embezzled more than $1 million. That's not all. Kelland Investigates took a deep dive into the Gear Up grant terms from the federal government. We looked at what was promised and what was not delivered. We also uncovered elaborate spending that didn't seem to fit with the grant's mission of preparing Native American students for college. In the end, the state charged three people with crimes. Former Mid-Central Educational Cooperative Assistant Business Manager Stephanie Hubers was acquitted on theft charges that stemmed from payments she took from her boss, Scott Westerhouse. Former Director of the Co-op, Dan Gerke, pled guilty to one charge of falsifying evidence. He was accused of backdating contracts to avoid an audit. Then, just last week, head of AIIII, Stacey Phelps, was acquitted on all charges against him for falsifying evidence by backdating those same contracts. In tonight's Eye on Kelloland, Angela Kennecke brings you highlights of the week-long trial, what came out in testimony and what did not. Stacey Phelps' family and friends waited for a verdict as the jury deliberated for nearly nine hours. Yes. In the end, jurors found Phelps not guilty of four charges that all stemmed from Mr. two Phelps. backdated contracts. Can you tell us how you feel at this moment? Stacey would rather have me talk. The Indian people of this state have always known that Stacey Phelps is innocent of these charges. The jury listened to a recording in which Phelps admitted to investigators that he had backdated the contracts, but he said that was only because Scott Westerhouse told him to do so, not because he was trying to avoid an audit of the American Indian Institute for Innovation. Phelps' attorney painted his client out to be a poor financial manager of AIIII and said he had left the finances up to Westerhouse while Phelps worked on the programs. Prosecutors claim Phelps had reason to want to avoid an audit of AIIII because his board of directors didn't know about the $8,000 to $10,000 a month in contract business it was doing with reservation schools and 22 vehicles it owned. Most of the evidence of elaborate spending by Phelps and AIIII was not allowed in the trial. In June of 2016, Kettleland Investigates reported the state had receipts of Phelps spending $240,000 in federal grant money on high-end steakhouses, the restaurant in the Seattle Space Needle, and several stores for personal items. Who's really watching this program? Those receipts matched what a former Gear Up worker who did not want to be publicly identified reported to Kettleland Investigates in May of 2016. And I would notice the extravagant spending, the extra, you know, the Brazilian steakhouse, hundred plus dollar, you know, bills off of one or two people. AIIII receipts from the Rapid City Minervas alone added up to more than seven thousand dollars. And those Minervas walls should talk. Because every single meeting that was ever held with Garrett was in Minerva. According to a state special audit in May of 2017, Scott and Nicole Westerhouse, along with Stacy Phelps, were compensated not only by Mid Central, but also their various nonprofits, which amounts to double dipping. A chart in the report shows that those three employees made as much as $170,000 a year. Our Kelloland News investigation dug into MedCentral's own audit, and over a two-year period, the co-op paid out $853,000 in gear-up money to AIIII. During that same time, MedCentral also paid an additional $386,000 to 10 members of the Phelps family in salary, benefits, and expenses. The special state report said AIIII should have been subject to a state audit when it got more than $500,000 in grant money from 2012 to 2014. That didn't happen. On the stand in Phelps' trial, AIIII board member and former astronaut John Harrington testified that he didn't know about the spending or the contract work that Phelps was doing on behalf of AIIII until after Westerhouse's death. In closing arguments, Phelps' attorney told the jury his client was just another Westerhouse victim 
something a former Gear Up worker told Kelloland Investigates two months after the tragedy. I think Stacy Phelps might have made some bad decisions, but I don't think he did anything wrong. I think he trusted people that he shouldn't have trusted, and those people would have been at Mid Central or on the advisory committee. In the end, much of the inappropriate activity involving grant funds may not be illegal, and there is still little recourse under the law if something like gear up were to happen again. The courtroom isn't the place to necessarily solve some of these financial type corruption cases. And when you talk about transparency, the media has a role. I mean, you heard it, some of the trial testimony that when Bob Mercer was poking and prodding, people were noticing. And I think if we look at these cases, I think the lesson learned is our state needs to look at its transparency. We've always maintained his innocence, and we proved it. God is great. That's all I have to say. Kettleland Investigates has reported about Mid-Central and AIIIS lack of data about results of the Gear Up program. Well, Dan Gerke boasted to state legislators a 95% success rate of Native American students going to college. There actually was no data to back up those numbers. Since the not guilty verdict, Kettleband News has received a dozen emails from students who say the Gear Up program enabled them to go to college. We've invited them to all sit down with us for an interview. Meanwhile, several civil suits over Gear Up continue to make their way through court. Two Native American students have filed a class action lawsuit against AIIII, Mid Central, and its board members on behalf of all the reservation students who were supposed to be served by Gear Up. You can see all of our investigative reports on our Gear Up timeline going back three years at Kelloland.com.